flood and drain systems. This is an all time favorite for many hobbyists out there that are doing aquaponics. We're gonna go through some of the top pros and cons of operating this system. The school of aquaponics. Probably the most appealing benefit to having a flood and drain system is the fact that it doesn't require extra components um, for it to operate. Um, and other systems, NFT, deep water culture systems, vertical systems, it requires um, external um, uh, filtration, solids filtration, and exer external uh, biological filtration as well. In a flood and drain system, it's all compact into one uh, compartment pretty much inside of the media bed. The media bed acts as a solids filter, even though it's not the greatest, and it also acts as a biological filter where the ammonia um, gets oxidized into nitrite and then nitrate eventually um, in the nitrification process. So, I mean, this is a huge benefit to people who are just getting started. This is probably the go-to system for people that are just getting started and introduced into aquaponics because it just doesn't require any type of external um, filtration uh, mechanisms or anything like that. It's just all just a, you know, a put it together and let it run type system. Um, so it, that, it works very well for that type of application. Um, another one of the benefits of a, a, a flood and drain system is that um, it provides a constant source of mineralized solids that are available to the plants where there's microbes that are able to break down the solids um, and able to release nutrients that are locked inside of the solids. Um, and, you know, the plants have a constant supply of that, whereas other systems you may need a separate mineralization tank um, to get those nutrients out um, because you don't want to keep them for too, uh, too long of a period in your system because then denitrification begins to take place and that begins to um, take away um, the nitrate inside of the system. So, you know, uh, most part for the most part, you really don't want that happening in your system. But there are exceptions to that. But uh, a flood and drain system is constantly mineralizing the solids and supplying and unlocking those nutrients and providing those to the plant. So a lot of times, once these media beds get established for a long period of time, they're able to grow crops uh, very well without having too many deficiencies um, with low feeding rates. Probably the biggest pro of a media bed system is the fact that it can support the widest variety of crops out of all of the system. It trumps all systems um, as far as crop variety because of the fact that it, you, you're using a media-based um, uh, system to support crops. So you can grow super large crops because they have, their roots have um, a material to hold on to and uh, can be sturdy. It's, it's similar to growing in soil. And that's the point of soil. Is the, uh, one of the points of soil is to have uh, um, a place where roots can anchor and hold themselves up. So me, the media bed uh, provides that for the crops. So you can grow tomatoes, um, cuc large crops, plants, large uh, trees, mango trees. I mean, you can grow all type papaya trees. You can grow all type of things inside of this system just because it has the roots have something to anchor on. So this is a super, super, super um, benefit to this system that none of the other systems uh, have. So they, none of the other systems can really compete on that level. Now that we've discussed the pros, let's move on to the cons. Um, now, one of the cons of a, a media bed or a flood and drain system is that um, it's immobile. Once you pretty much, depending on the size that you get, most people are going to have like a four by eight um, sized uh, media bed. And once you put that thing down, it's pretty much immobile. And I say it's immobile because it's going to have between one ton and one and a half tons of gravel inside of it. If you're using gravel, um, and most people are going to be using uh, gravel. Um, or else it pretty much defeats the purpose of having the media bed and having something sturdy to grow large crops. So pretty much when you build it and you put it down wherever you're going to put it, it's pretty much there for a long time. Because no one, you can't just call Johnny up the street and say, come on over, let's grab one end of it. And let's pick it up and move it somewhere. It's not happening. It's a ton that's, uh, it's a ton to a ton and a half of weight in there. So moving on, um, another con of the media bed system is that it is the most expensive to build. It has um, pretty much the same components of a deep water culture system, um, but the gravel or the media to put inside of the media bed uh, is way more expensive than the, the, um, the, the polystyrene foam that you're going to put on a deep water culture system. And you really don't have many options for the media. Um, and gravel is probably the least expensive. And then if you just think about putting hydrogen uh, clay pebbles in there, then woo, your price is going through the roof. So that's another con. Now, the biggest con, in my opinion, of a media bed, uh, bed system is the labor required um, to operate it. It's labor intensive, 
and it's labor expensive, both of them. And we'll do separate videos um, uh, to calculate the labor required with the media bed versus other systems. And you'll find out it's drastically more expensive to operate a media bed in comparison to any of the other systems because, and this comes into play when we're talking about planting and harvesting, because when you're planting with a media bed, you have to dig inside the media to place your, um, your, 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 your crop. Other systems, it's a drag and drop method. So in the long run, when you're planting 1,000, 2,000 uh, uh, seedlings a week, it's going to build up. And we'll do the calculations, and you'll see it's, a, tr it's a, a significant difference, which is going to cut into labor costs by a lot. We'll, you, you'll see. So this is the biggest con and why you'll hardly see any commercial operations really using media beds because they've done the calculations already and you start crunching the numbers and you find out a lot of times it's not worth it because you can use other methods to grow the same crop and get the same results. Um, so most people aren't using aquaponics to grow papaya trees and large things like that. So it really doesn't make sense for the majority of the operations. But um, overall, um, the, the, the flood and drain and media bed systems are gr super great for beginners. Recommend it for people that are getting started be just because of the ease of use and you don't have to worry about um, other type of uh, 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 filtration methods and everything. It's all it pretty much all there. You just get your fish tank, put it on top of there uh, or put it on the bottom and run it that way and then you'll, you'll be fine. But as far as commercial use or even longevity and efficiency, then you know it might, it's not the best option um, for that uh, cause. So this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!